Hey everyone, we're going to continue in section 7.1 today. We're going to start to, uh, to tackle objective number two, which is finding the composition between two functions. Go ahead and click on the tab that says composition. Um, the composition of two functions, f and g, is defined to be f composed of g of x. That's what this notation would be read as. f composed of g of x, or that is no different than saying f of g of x when it's written in this other notation. Um, or you could say f evaluated at g of x. Uh, if you have a really good understanding of function notation, um, finding the composition between two functions shouldn't be that bad. Basically, all you're doing is you're evaluating one function with another function. In this case, we're evaluating the function f um, with the function g. Now, what happens in a composition is the range of the inner function, which in this case is g, becomes the domain of the outer function, which is f. Okay? So by range of g, we're talking about the y values of g. Those y values in a composition turn into the x values of the outer function, in this case, f. Okay. So let me give you an illustration to better understand that. Open this GeoGebra applet up. Hopefully it loads. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see I have two functions. Uh, f of x equals 0.5x. That's the line that you see graphed. And then g of x equals 0.25x squared. That's the parabola that you see graphed. And notice I have the box checked to show f of g of x. Okay. And I can move this triangle wherever I want. This is going to represent the x value that I start off the uh, function with, okay? So I'm going to begin by plugging a number in for x into the function g. So in this case, g is the parabola. When I plug that number in for x, it's going to give me a y value. That y value is represented by the notation g of x. Okay, now remember, y is our range values. What now happens is I take that y value or that range value and I now think of it as an x value that can then be plugged in to find a resulting y in the outer function f. Okay, uh, let me reset this and I'll show you what it would look like if I used um, the function g of f of x, I'm just going to move my value of x somewhere different just because. Um, I plug this value for x into the inner function, which in this case is f. The y value is now considered f of x, and it turns into a x value. It goes from a range value to a domain value to then plug into the outer function g. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good illustration of what what we're doing by finding a composition. Okay, um, I think it's extremely important to understand that composition is a type of operation just like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, the only difference is Composition is specific to functions. You cannot find the composition between real numbers. You can only find the composition between two functions, just by the, the very definition of it. All right, let's get into an example of our own. Here I have a linear function f of x equals x plus 7, and a quadratic function g of x equals x squared minus 4. Um, I first want to find the composition between f and g of 3, f composed of g of 3. Okay, now understand this is the same. I could write it as f of g of 3. 
Um, I'll use both notations so you get exposure to both, okay? Um, the first thing you'll do is you'll begin with the inner function. In this case, I'd say the inner function is g, and we're going to evaluate that with a 3. So we're, we're basically saying we're going to plug 3 in for x in the function g, and that's going to give us 9 minus 4, or 5, okay? So understand the 3 that we started with was an x value. The 5 that we're ending with there is a y value, okay? Uh, now, by substitution, I can, I can simplify this notation. Instead of f of g of 3, I can rewrite this now as f of 5 because we just showed that g of 3 is equivalent to 5, okay? So understand, what, what we've done here is we've taken this y value of 5 from the function g, and we're now thinking of it as an x value in the function f, okay? And um, f of 5 would be no more than 5 plus 7, or 12. And that is our resulting value of this composition. Before we get to the second example, um, let's click on this illustration here so you can better see what we're doing. All right, so let me go back, actually. Our functions were x plus 7 and x squared minus 4. So I'm going to type in... x plus 7 for f. And down here, x squared minus 4 for g. And then notice, down at the bottom left of this applet, I have an input value for x. Um, we're going to make it a 3, OK? because that is the value that we're starting with. We're trying to find, um, let's click on the box that says f of g of x. So if x is 3 to start, we're finding f of g of 3, OK? So this would show this is finding g of 3. OK, g of 3 is equal to 5. That 5, again, is a y value right now, or a range value. And we're going to take that and treat it as an x value now to plug into the function f. Now f of 5 equals 12. It's kind of hard to see, but there it is up there. And we can now say that f of g of 3 is equal to 12. Okay? All right, now let's go in the other direction. So... Now I'm trying to find g composed of f of 3. Okay, That would be the same as finding g of f of 3. So this time I would say the inner function is f. And I'll find f of 3. That's 3 plus 7, or 10, right? So by substitution... I can think of this as g of 10 now. And g of 10 would equal 10 squared minus 4. So that's 100 minus 4, or 96. OK. All right, now, uh, last thing I want to notice before we uh, end the video here. Notice that these two results are different. f of g of 3 did not yield the same result as g of f of 3. And remember, I started off the lesson by, by saying that we, we want to think of composition as a operation between two functions, okay? So this, these examples show that composition is not commutative, okay? Finding 
f of g of x does not always equal g of f of x. Okay. Which is unlike the operations of addition and multiplication. You think if I if I did f times g of x, that would give me the same as g times f of x every time. And the same thing with addition. Okay. All right, now it's your turn to practice. Click on practice two. Um, you have two new functions to work with there. And um, you can check your answers as, as you go. If you get stuck, just go back and uh, watch the video and how we've done everything in example two.